This is the first of a series in three videos where I am sharing my story about depression and the tools and the techniques that I have used personally to help me heal from depression myself. So I felt intuitively guided to create this series, even though it feels vulnerable, even though I feel like I'm being exposed, even though it feels really, really uncomfortable to share this because I deeply believe that when we have access to these tools that I'm gonna be sharing with you, we can overcome so many of the circumstances in our life. We can, come we can overcome so many of the illnesses, physical, mental, we can overcome so much and we can become empowered and we can start really taking control back of our minds and our lives. So it is my intention from this video series that anyone that needs to hear this, anyone that's going through something similar to what I went through and is looking for the tools, is looking for tips, is looking for techniques, because when I looked online, I couldn't really find what I needed to help me but I am a mindset coach, I'm a manifestation coach. And so I knew a lot of this stuff that I'm gonna be sharing with you and it has helped me tremendously to heal from depression. So my hope is that you will be able to pick something up from here that will help you, that will empower you and that will help you change your life in one way or another. So just on this front, I just wanna caveat this because I care about you and I want you to get what you need. I want you to get the healing that you need. So I am in no way, shape or form offering medical advice, clinical advice. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychotherapist, so I'm not here to diagnose or give you advice or tell you what to do. That is not my intention at all. I am simply here to share my journey, to share my experience with you in the view that something that I share might be something that you could adopt, might be something that empowers you, might be something that helps you. So with that said, my name is Kirsty Kamarowskis. Welcome to my channel. I am here to help you unlock your mind, your power and your potential so you can create a business and life that you are worthy of. Please know that there is light at the end of the tunnel, that you are so worthy of healing and so worthy of living a life that you love. And I am sending you so much love right now if you are feeling any of the things I'm about to share with you. So let's get this video started. For a lot of last year and several months of this year, I was suffering from depression and I knew that I had depression. Eventually, it wasn't very apparent at first, but I realized that I was suffering from depression because I had been through it before after I'd had my second child when my children were both still very young. I went through a period of depression and I'd gone to the doctors and I'd got antidepressants for it for quite a while. And I didn't have any mindset or mindful tools or techniques that I was using on a day-to-day -day basis. So I really felt like it had taken over me completely. This time was slightly different because I'm a mindset coach, as I've said, and a manifestation coach. And I really understand how the mind works. I understand the subconscious. I understand the law of attraction, even when it comes to our thoughts and attracting like-minded thoughts. And I understand so much more on such a deeper level. So in some respect, my experience of depression was very, very different because I'd be high vibing on some days I'd feel really, really good. It'd take me a while to get there in the morning through my practices that I do through meditation, visualization, and other things that I do. But then the next day I could be absolutely down in the dumps. I could be crying for hours on end and not even knowing why I could be feeling so hopeless, so worthless, so deeply sad and so powerless. And I just couldn't find a balance at all. And I think the mindset techniques and the tools were kind of picking me up, but I still wasn't acknowledging or realizing that I was suffering from depression. I still wasn't treating it per se. So it was very, very different this time. And it reached the point where I finally realized and I started questioning, is this depression? Like, am I going through depression again? And the fact that I was pretty much could burst into tears like that, and I was pretty much crying every other day and I was waking up in the middle of the night as well sometimes even if I went to bed feeling really good feeling really sound and you know calm and in, in with inner peace but in the night I would wake up and just in fear and anxiety and stress and not being able to get back to sleep and I'd eventually calm myself down and go back to sleep but in the morning I could wake up just feeling so 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 down so eventually I realized this is what was going on and I remember at the time, these shorts started popping up on my feed. Dr. Julie, I don't know if you've seen them, perhaps you have. She's a psychotherapist and she does a lot of shorts that get millions of views on depression. And every time I watched one of them, I just burst into tears because it hit home so much for me. And it was so true to me. That was exactly what I was going through. So for a few weeks, I was battling with the idea of going to the doctor because one day I'd feel okay and the next day I felt awful. So on the days that I felt okay, I'm like, no, I can do this. I've nailed it. And then I'd be back down again. 
And on those days, I'd be like, do I do it, do I not? I really, really felt because of the work I do for other people, because of the work I do for myself, because of what I teach and coach, I knew that I had it within me to actually recover and heal from this myself. And so that's the decision that I made. And I'll just add this as well, because I've forgotten to say this. Like when you feel, when you're suffering from depression, there's such a feeling of worthlessness, of such low self-worth. And I think what really held me back for the longest time was the fact that I do do this for a living, the fact that I do help other people with their mindset and with manifestation is that I was telling myself, you know, you shouldn't be in this situation. You shouldn't, of all people, should not be depressed. You shouldn't be feeling anxiety. You shouldn't, you know, you're obviously not very good at what you do, right? The inner critic runs rampant, that the ego starts screaming. I heard someone say once that the ego either wants to be the best of the best or the worst of the worst. And that ego voice wanted me to feel the worst of the worst, like completely worthless. And that obviously didn't help. And this is, you know, it's another part of depression, right? But I felt so like embarrassed and ashamed, so deeply ashamed of myself for feeling depressed and feeling depressed when this is the work I do. And I've done so much personal growth work as well. So if you're resonating with any of this, please know that this is part of it. This is part of depression. This is not a reflection on you. And we need to just give ourselves so much love, so much self-compassion on this journey, on this healing journey, because it is a healing journey that you're embarking on. Whether you do this through the doctors, whether you do this through therapy, and please go seek the advice you need. Please get the help that you need because it's not something to fuck around with, right? Depression is serious and it can get very, very serious. So, you know, please seek what you need. So, so let me share some of the tips then that I've broken this video series down into three videos. This first video is really just the foundational tips. The next video, I'm going to share with you some of the law of attraction techniques and practices that really, really helped me continue on my healing journey and deepen it. And then with even more in the third video. So I'm not sharing the law of attraction stuff in this video because when I was feeling pretty depressed, I didn't want anyone talking to me about positive feelings and vibing high. You know, I was so far from that level. If you ever heard Abraham Hicks talk about the emotional scale where love and peace and gratitude and appreciation are up here and depression's right down on the bottom. You are so far removed when you feel like this from anything that is high vibe. And that is not the goal. The goal is to just feel a bit better, incrementally, bit by bit, step by step. It is not to try and make a quantum leap in feeling high vibe because it's just impossible to get there from here. So in this video, I'm just gonna share with you the basics, the foundations that really, really helped me, the things that I had to do first in order for me to elevate to that next level. So the first one was I had to make that decision. I had to make that decision that I was ready to heal. I acknowledged that's where I was, and then I made a decision, a commitment to myself. Everything starts with a decision, and I think we don't understand or we underestimate how powerful a decision is. A decision that you make in your mind, in your body, is so powerful because by making that decision, you're setting an intention. Your higher self, your soul, the universe, your guides, higher power, whatever way you want to look at it, is going to help you fulfill that intention. So that decision is so powerful, and it really is the first step. And it's a massive, massive change maker like it sets the ball rolling it starts turning you into a different trajectory so I had to make that decision I made the decision that I was going to heal and I also decided that I was going to do it by myself which again if this is you listening please do it in the way that feels right to you I have a lot of experience working with the mind so if you need to seek guidance seek help seek support seek therapy seek medical assistance then please do that and don't be ashamed because your journey is your journey and it is unique to you. And you will know from your intuition, from your guidance, what is right for you right now. So let's make that decision. I made that decision. The next thing I did was I stopped associating with depression. So I stopped telling myself because this voice kept running over and over. As soon as I realized that that is what I was going through, I am depressed, I am depressed, I am depressed. And we know whatever follows our I ams is what we become. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So. I suddenly became very aware of that voice in my head that was saying it on repeat over and over. And I made the decision that that's not what I want to hear myself saying and I don't want to identify it. And I remember this time I went to see a chiropractor years and years and years ago. I was going through a lot of stress and it was manifesting in my body through physical pain in my neck. And I remember going to see him and I was talking about my neck pain. And I'll never forget him talking about this. He said, it's so interesting. So many of the people that come into me, so many of my patients come in and they call it my my neck pain, my back pain, my sciatica, right? 
And what they're doing is they're holding on to it. It's becoming part of their identity. It's becoming part of who they are. They're seeing themselves as this as being part of who they are. When we're in reality, it's a symptom, right? So if we're identifying with the thing that is causing us stress and the conditions and circumstances that we don't want in our life, we are holding on to it. We're keeping it because it's part of our identity. So we want to be able to disassociate ourselves from it because I realized I am not depression. I am not this thing, this thing that I feel is happening to me, that's part of me, that's in me, that's everywhere. Like It isn't who I am. It isn't Kirsty. Kirsty isn't depression. So actually, I'm going to start telling myself something different and I'm going to remove that and I'm not going to say the words I am depressed anymore. I'm going to allow that to be disassociated. And when that comes to my mind, I am going to change it and just say depression is moving through me. I am experiencing the feeling of depression right now and that's okay right it's a totally different relationship to I am I am this is me this is me this is me because it, it makes it so hard to get unstuck from that so that is another thing that I did that was so powerful these two things alone just changed so much for me in a really really short amount of time and they're so simple and they're so small but they're very significant and very powerful the next thing I decided to do was to really rely on something bigger than me so whatever your beliefs are I asked higher power, I asked my higher self, my soul, to start guiding me, to help me with this healing. So whether it's God, whether it's universe, whether it's source energy, whether it's your soul, whether it's your spirit guides, whatever it is that you believe in is absolutely fine. But ask for help because you don't have to do this alone. You are deeply loved, you are deeply protected in this universe, you are deeply cared for, you're so important. And you don't have to do these things alone. There is a power running through all of us. There is a life force energy that runs through every single animal, every plant, every human being on this planet. And it's undeniable. It's what gives us life. It's what gives us breath. It's the essence of us that when we are no longer here, when we die, the physical body is left, this life force leaves. So that life force is in you right now and it is powerful and it can help you. So call on it, ask it for help, surrender yourself to allowing this life force, God, higher power, the universe, your spirit guides, your soul, your higher self. Like when I asked for this help, it felt like something was going to help me. And actually, it's a very, very powerful thing to do. And you will notice things, maybe synchronicities might start occurring. Maybe the right things will start popping up on the internet. Maybe you'll start seeing signs. You'll start getting nudges. You'll start hearing in songs or seeing videos like this online or hearing stories other people's stories about what you're going through and what they're going through. And these synchronicities start happening because you're being guided, because you're being given the tools, the next steps, the nudges and the things that you need. And it's really beautiful. So you don't have to do this alone and you really can get help in that way. So number four, and this was along with disassociating from I am, was really starting to listen to the critic in my mind, really listening to that story I was telling myself on repeat because it was my story that got me here in the first place. It's the thoughts that I'd been telling myself. It's the emotions that I'd been suppressing. It's the memories that I was keeping alive from the past. It was all of this focus going on to what I didn't want that was creating all of this in the first place. So I started noticing what that story was that I was telling myself. And I started reframing and choosing to tell myself a different story. And in my case, at this point, instead of the blame, the shame, the things that were wrong, the things that I was scared of, I started directing it towards healing. I am healing. I am healing. I am healing from this. I am releasing depression from my mind, from my body, from my energy field. And I started using mantras. I started using affirmations. And sometimes they, these can feel really difficult because your mind is like, bullshit, no, rubbish. And if you're feeling depressed, like I was, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to say these things to myself. So for me, it was about catching the right time. So I wasn't feeling so low, so down every second of the day. You know, some days I'd feel good. Some days I'd be fine. So on those days, on those moments, in those even if it was just a glimpse of a moment, I would just affirm the new truths to myself. And it wasn't even anything like big. It was, I took inspiration from Tony Robbins and I would say to myself, every day if I could, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. Every day in every way, I'm getting stronger and stronger. Every day in every way, I'm getting healthier and healthier. That was the, one of the mantras that I used and it really, really helped because there's no pressure. You're not putting any pressure on yourself. All you're looking to do is just feel a little bit better every day. So it removes all of that pressure and 
Pressure was one of the things that really created this feeling of depression in the first place, so much pressure. So when we can alleviate that, when we can release that, when we can take away these things that we're just loading on ourselves, then we can find it easier to navigate our way through it and elevate beyond it and above it and heal. So the mantras, the affirmations, I am healing. I am healing, I am being guided. I am being supported. And just reminding ourselves that it's okay to go through what we're going through. And this is another big piece was acceptance. Acceptance for where I was, this is where I am. Like why try and fight it anymore? What we resist persists. So when we're trying to fight where we are, we're keeping stuck there, we're staying there. We can't move through it. When we accept where we are, and we can wholeheartedly accept it. It doesn't mean we're making it okay. It doesn't mean we're saying we want to be like this forever. We're just saying, this is where I am now and it's okay. It's okay. This is what it is. I can't change it unless I accept it. We have to accept it first. So I accepted that's where I was and then just looked for ways to improve one tiny bit at a time because that's what I didn't need the giant steps. I didn't need the quantum leaps. I didn't need that amount of pressure again. It was how can I get a little bit better? How can I feel better? How can I heal? How can I give myself a bit more love today? How can I give myself a bit more compassion today? How can I tell myself something a bit kinder today? It's these baby steps, these baby steps, all compounded, make massive shifts in our mind, body and energy. And they can create drastic results for us without the pressure. So acceptance is so powerful and important. Your story, listening to that inner critic is so, so important. And your inner voice is gonna become your best friend because when we start noticing what it is we're telling ourselves and then we change it, then we can change the direction of our energy, our focus and our attention, which means we're gonna change the results, whether that's through emotion in our body, whether that's through physical action, whether that is through the results we're getting back, the conditions in our lives, the circumstances in our lives. Like we have so much power inside of us to really redirect and change everything outside of us because everything outside of us is purely an expression of what is inside of us. So the more we learn to master our minds, manage our emotions, understand what's happening and give ourselves unlimited amounts of self-love and self-compassion, then we really do have the power to change anything, whether it's depression, whether it's extreme poverty, whether it is just extreme loneliness and not having anyone in our lives, whatever it is, we do have that power to change it. So while we're talking about feelings, the next one is really adopting an attitude of gratitude. Now again, it can feel like a long way to go from depression to gratitude, and it certainly did for me. So again, I was practicing when I was feeling good and I was allowing my vibration to build and I was allowing myself to feel appreciation. But on the days that I wasn't feeling good, I would look for appreciation still, but I would look for it in the general things, not the things that was causing all the upset in the first place. It was in the day-to-day -day things, just walking around and feeling the sun on my face and just taking a moment to feel present and really appreciate that. This was so powerful in building those micro moments, those micro shifts during the day that would compound throughout the day into a better feeling emotion. It's these tiny little things we do. It's never the big things we do. It's the tiny little things we do in the small moments. Something so basic as that, when I'd have my coffee, I would drink it and I would taste it and I would enjoy it and I would give thanks for it, I would appreciate it. When I looked at the dogs and they're being so sweet and I'm feeling so helpless and they're licking my face, I could still find a moment of appreciation because it was so sweet, because they loved me, because I could feel their love and I could appreciate the feeling of that love right in that moment. So when we look for these moments of gratitude and appreciation, like, it is scientifically proven that we can't feel fear when we're in gratitude. We can't feel depression when we're in gratitude. So we really are starting to tip the balance and focusing on something that we then want to build and allow to expand. So it becomes the dominant vibration. And as that becomes the dominant vibration, that will start to heal us. And that is what happened for me. So it was really, instead of focusing on what I don't want, focusing on the lack, focusing on the problems, focusing on the shame, and the guilt and the feeling like I was an imposter because how could I be going through this and then teach mindset and manifestation, right? I felt like an absolute imposter. So it's not focusing on those things, it's instead focusing on the things to be grateful for, the things to appreciate, the things that we do have. Because we've always, in any given moment, we're always gonna have more than someone else. There's always gonna be someone worse off than us. 
So we're always going to find something to feel grateful for. And I would feel grateful for my breath. I would feel grateful for my body. I'd feel grateful for my mind. I'd feel grateful for the power to choose my thought in that moment, even if most of my moments I didn't feel that power and I didn't feel like I could choose my thoughts because the other thoughts were so strong. It was noticing the times where I did feel I had that power, I had that control, and really tapping into that and appreciating that and giving thanks for that. So gratitude, you would have heard it a million times, is such a healer. It is something that can completely transform everything in your life forever because it changes how you perceive things. And when you change how you perceive things by law of attraction, you'll be attracting differently because your focus, your observation is on something completely different. So you change your point of attraction. So it really is beautiful and healing. And we don't need to get there all in one go. We just focus on the micro shifts, the micro shifts in vibration, feeling and focus, little by little, bit by bit, and we can get there. So number seven, which really ties in with this is tapping into love. And appreciation is a very similar vibration to love. If we allow ourselves to love when we're feeling like that, if we can still look at a child, a dog, something, you know, snuggling in our bed and just feeling, oh my God, I feel so relieved that I am here. And actually I love this feeling of relief. Whatever it is, like love is a powerful, powerful frequency. And again, it's a healing vibration. It's a healing frequency. And when we can allow ourselves to tap into that, we could do it through a meditation. We could do it through listening to some high vibrational music on YouTube. We can do it through so many things and just give it again, it's self-love. Like, what did I need in that moment? And this is the questions I'd ask myself. How can I be kinder to myself? How can I be more loving to myself? What do I need in this moment? What will help me right now? What can I give to myself to make myself feel relief? And I wasn't looking to feel high vibe. I was looking for relief because relief helps you shift up that emotional scale and it really helps you shift your emotions. So again, we're looking at those tiny steps, those small, shifts that make such a difference. And one of the things that I cut out was social media. I would still go on and post some days, but I would not allow myself to scroll because what I noticed I was doing when I was in that disempowered emotion and state and place, then I'd be comparing. I'd be focusing on lack. I'd be focusing on comparison. I'd be focusing on how I wasn't good enough. And we don't need to be doing that to ourselves. And that was one of the best things that I did was really cut out the social media and really stop looking and stop, you know, for my business, stop getting ideas from what other people were doing, stop looking for the inspiration because that really quickly turned into comparison. It really quickly turned into feeling shit about myself. What is the point? There's absolutely no point in that. And we all know that social media shows the best of everyone's lives anyway. You know, we don't see the crappy times. We don't see the shit they're going through. So all it does is give us a really false idea of what's really, really going on. And then we compare ourselves and make ourselves feel bad because of that, which is part of the reason why I'm sharing these videos so that I can share the whole of it so that I can not just share the good things, the empowering things, the advice, the tips, the, you know, let's, let's feel high vibe. But let's deal with the crap as well, because the law of polarity, we are humans. We're here to ride all of the emotional waves. We're here to deal with all the emotions. We're here to deal with all the late stages of and levels of growth and learning and teaching. And it's not all rosebuds and butterflies. When we learn, when we grow, when we heal, we uncover a load of crap. And we have to manage that. We have to allow that to process through. So that's why I wanted to share this with you as well, because I want you to see this side too. So they are some of my biggest, most foundational tips. There's a lot there. But if you feel like they resonate, if you feel like you're ready to give a couple a go, if you feel like they'll help you on your journey, then please do let me know in the comments what you're gonna try. Let me know in the comments if anything has resonated with you, if this has helped you at all, because I have another two videos coming and I'm really doing it for you. I'm doing it for anyone out there that felt how I felt and that is looking for the tools and is lacking the tools and needs some inspiration wherever they are in their path, in their journey. And they're just looking for that extra bit of support where they can help themselves, where they can try and self-coach themselves a little bit more. This is for you and I really, really hope from the bottom of my heart that this has helped you, that this has served you. I was so guided to create this and this has just been created from, the, from my heart to yours and I just want you to know things will change. Things will get better. Everything's temporary. Everything evolves. This is just part of the journey. This doesn't have to be your story. This is just part of the journey and I am sending you so much love and just hope that you can do the same for yourself. So much self-love, so much self-compassion, because that's really going to help you get through this with a lot more ease, 
a lot more speed and a lot more grace. So sending you so, so much love. Let me know in the comments if this has helped. And of course, if you want to watch the next videos, subscribe to the channel so that you'll be notified when they're released in the next few days. I'll see you in the next video.